Hey, it's Jose Galison. You're watching No Way Jose. You can find me on the No Way Jose YouTube channel, also on all the major audio podcatchers and Odyssey as well. Uh, as always, credit to Justin Campbell for the intro at jcamp1521 on Twitter. If you want someone to go hook you up with any of your podcasting needs, he's, I'm, I'm assuming, I say I always say he's always looking for commissions, but I don't know, maybe he's not. But I, I would assume he's looking for commissions. Uh, so if you're anyone out there, you know, some somebody you want to pay to do intros, editing, you know, just put out clip videos, whatever, you, you name it, he's your guy, go hit him up. Uh, today my guest is James Gentleman of the Blackbird Podcast. Uh, today is it's a live stream if you're watching it on the 14th uh it will i will immediately put it like on listed private whatever after the stream and it'll come back up roughly ish a week later uh so if you want to be able to have access to it in the meantime and any any other number of uh, slew of uh benefits that come with the differing levels uh you need to be a patron at patreon.com just no way jose 2020 the lowest level is two bucks it'll get you access to the uh be able to watch them in the meantime to kind of have early access or, or you can always do it free where like you said you catch it on the live stream or you wait for it to come out uh i also think i believe since it duplicates since i go live i believe it will stay up on odyssey so you can always go uh, go to odyssey so if you don't want to give me money and you want to be able to catch it in the meantime uh go to odyssey and watch it there uh yeah um and you know with my different levels my highest level is 20 bucks uh, that's a sponsor level for 20 bucks a month, I have CD McRae of the Whiskey and Tea podcast. Jeremy, uh, who I just had on uh, not too long ago. Oh, well, that's weird. I just lost uh, James in there. Uh, hopefully, he comes back before this is done. That's weird. Uh, okay, I'll just try to drag this on. Uh, all right, well, that's weird. Uh, I mean, you guys can't see what I'm saying, but I can see in the bottom of my little little thing, it shows that he's not there anymore. But uh, I don't know. We'll uh, drag this out for a minute. But uh, yeah, I have... Um, I have, uh, God, um, one second. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, maybe we'll have to redo this, but we'll see. Uh, hopefully he's back before I'm done with the intro. Uh, anyways, I have my, uh, there he's back. All right, cool. Uh, crisis averted. But yeah, with my, uh, my, uh, sponsors, I have Jeremy, like I was trying to say before I got thrown off, uh, by, I guess, James spotty connection or whatever's going on. Uh, <laughs> I have, uh, of Jeremy, he, we just did an episode last week, uh, actually it should be my latest episode if you're watching on the live stream right now. Uh, we, for my $10 level, I allow my patrons to come on and, uh, we'll can I, I call it a patron curated episode. Uh, so basically got a curated episode with that. He came on, uh, you know, we kind of talked about some topics that touched him. It was a good episode. I've always, I've done two of these so far and I've been, I've, you know, enjoyed them I and mean, who knows, maybe one of these days I'll have uh, someone who pays 10 bucks and it's an awful episode and, but I don't know, whatever. I like it so far. Uh, we'll keep them going. Uh, I may even bring Jeremy on again sometime because he was actually a legit a good guest. So it's a good way to, to mine content for me and also find new cool guests. Uh, also, I have Mikel Thorup of the Expat Money Show. His whole thing is, you know, helping people move uh, to for freedom, essentially, specifically out of, you know, the state or out of the you know, like country, if you will. Uh, he's definitely someone you should go check out. Uh, you know, patreon.com is no way Jose 2020. That's where you can find me at. Uh, today I don't really have a topic. Usually I have topics, uh, but you know, with somebody like, uh, James, uh, he's an old friend we can kind of talk about a slew of things. So we'll be touching on a lot of different stuff. Uh, so far as what's going on with the show soon next week, I'm so I, I'm looking like I'm gonna have David Brady on. Uh, we're going to be, uh, I told him I would, uh, he's wanting to get into working out and, uh, I have a, that's one of those things that I was really big into and I still work out regularly, but not like I used to back in the day, but I have a wealth of knowledge there. I'm definitely no professional, but I told him that if he can't, cause he, you know, asked Twitter, uh, you know, like, Hey, what can I do for, uh, to, for working out? And I'm like, anyone who's knows anything about working out is like, or, you know, dieting, cardio, any of that. It's like, uh, I'm going to need a little more information. So I told him if he'd came on my show, I would, you know, sit down, ask him questions and I'd give him a full on, I could have a workout uh, uh, routine. I'd give him, you know, even diet advice, uh, uh, cardio advice, you know, depending on what his goals are. So it all depends on what his goals are, what he's wanting to do, etc. But yeah, I have uh, Sal the Agris is coming on again next week. Uh, we'll be continuing our live live reading series, and then possibly Mark. That's up in the end. It's kind of pencil. Depends on the uh, thing. We'll be touching on some what uh, what has been referred to lately as Dark Mark, uh, and me and uh, me and James will definitely touch on that uh, in this episode probably uh yeah it's with tower gang i don't really have anything too big with that we did did our uh we had our uh, front porch uh tour or summer porch tour whatever the hell it's called that robbie did that was a lot of fun um 
One of Top Lobs says Cousins making like a really professional version of it. Uh, it's already up on uh, on Run Your Mouth on a, on his channel. I guess he has two channels. He may have trouble finding that one. But it's already up there. But we're going to be having like a really professional looking one come out eventually. So that should be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, anyone who's follows targeting knows we're only on Odyssey now. So you need to go to Odyssey. Go follow us there. Well, we do have a YouTube, but... Uh, we're kind of ban evading, and so I'm not really trying to send people there. If you really, 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 really are against Odyssey, uh, hit me up. I can send you the Tower Gang, the YouTube one. I mean, you know, we'll take what we can. But uh, Odyssey is where we want you to go. Uh, as always, uh, oh yeah, I actually do have something. We're we're gearing up uh, next month. We're we're this is gonna be a fun one. We're gonna call it Jonesing for June, uh, and we're doing a whole month on Tower Power Hour of fucking like uh, of conspiracy type stuff. So as of right now, we've kind of we have hit up Monica Perez. We probably there's the cool thing about uh, June is there's five Wednesdays in June, so uh, there should be a packed one. We've already uh, talked to. Yeah, yeah. Well, you threw it off, James. I see you in the comments saying longest intro ever. You threw it off. I had to, for a moment, I was like really slowing it down because I was like, and now you're making it go longer once again. But I had to slow it down because, like, shit, I got to give him time until like, Casey comes in. Uh, now it's hard to get back in the gear of quicking up my intro, but no, I'm still on slow. But uh, I'm almost done. Um, yeah. Uh, we, so, like I said, there's going to be five weeks. We already have kind of talked to Monica Perez. She's up to it. We haven't hammered down a week. We may also do like a four horsemen one, get uh, Ryan Dawson, Jackman, and obviously Reeds, who is one of ours, and bring him on. And that should be a lot of fun, especially if you guys know, I'm pretty sure Dawson did a whole documentary on how uh, a certain event uh, that a lot of people like to question the numbers of, maybe the numbers should be questioned. So that'll be a fun one. Uh, and you know, it lends us to being on a Odyssey, because uh, what are you, you going to do? Keep nuking us off YouTube? Whatever. Keep doing it. I don't care. Uh, I think we have like 70 subs on our new YouTube one. Who, who gives a shit? Uh, but yeah, with that, uh, let's go ahead. Oh, yeah, toplobster.com. You're supposed to check 10% off. Uh, but yeah, Top Lobster, Top Lobster, Top Lobster. He's the fucking dude. Uh, I love that guy. You definitely go uh, support him. With that, let's go bring in James. What's up, man? <laughs> How's it going, man? Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap. No, I saw I, you drop. So, and I was like, oh, yeah, the, the second you started, <laughs> the second you started talking, uh, my computer crashed. I, I thought I was gonna have to restart my my whole thing, but uh, it came back like just everything started spinning and I don't know. Yeah, it's it's an old it's an old computer. It's probably on its last legs. Mm -hmm. How you been? It's been forever. Yeah, no, it's it's been a while. Yeah, I, uh, I, I miss having talks with you. Uh, I mean, we uh, we had a lot in the earlier days. You know, when we first started out, because I mean, especially when you're new, it's kind of hard to get gas. So it's uh, you you kind of have your people you start out with and. I, I know and we're, we're always, you know, especially when we're, you know, new and green to this podcasting scene, we all have these ideas we want to work out. So it's fun to talk to each other, but uh, it's whenever, glad to have you back for sure. Whenever we talk, uh, do, you, do you remember like when we first were getting started and like, we weren't sure how many times a week we were going to go and like, should I be on the the Liberty Movement Network or whatever? Mm -hmm. like, we were, we were thinking about doing a joint show and your, your like working title for it was Jose and the Gay. Which <laughs> So, so now whenever I mention that I'm going to be talking to you either on your show or like when we're collaborating with Jacob or whatever, uh, my partner, Andrew always is like, Oh, Jose and the gay, like just <laughs> making, making fun of you. Cause that's such a terrible title. But, uh, I, I'm a, I have a big fan of, uh, rhymes and alliterations and I was yeah. trying to find something that worked. Like that's I have, right. we have Jose and James as both a J, but the way the alliteration works has to have the same sounds. It's like, God damn it. Like I can't, yeah. what with Jose? Like I, mean, I was, I was really trying to figure out something and that was, that was, that was like, for one, I honestly, that was not a serious proposal. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It was a working title. Uh, yeah. Okay, you are my right. favorite white skin. How did you How did you come up with Jose? Like, why is it Jose and not? Well, you something? know my real name, don't you? I do know your real name. Yeah. There you go. I, that's why. It's, oh, that's, that's why. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, cool. I mean, anybody who's listening is like, what? I don't know what the hell uh, we're, we're talking about. But anyone who knows my real name knows why it's so funny what my uh, this is. So uh, I know I know everyone's real name now, I think. Except for Clint Russell. I'm not sure what his real name is. Yeah, I actually, the only reason I remember it is because I just saw him like a week ago and he reminded me again. And I've heard it multiple times. The funny is the same thing. I know like almost all the people in this. Uh, wait, are you, wait, are you being serious? Does Clint really use a pseudonym? Well, no, he, he, uh, oh, I was he, joking. He said this before. He said this before. Oh, you were joking. Okay. He yeah. said this before. He does the thing where he uses his middle name as a, uh, as, oh, a, okay. as his last yeah, name. So sense. like Clint Russell cool. is his first and in in middle name. He doesn't cool. use his last name, which. I mean, and he wasn't really trying to like, you know, it wasn't even necessarily it was a trying entirely to be anonymous. If you know his last name, it, 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 he, Clint Russell's a better radio name or a better. It's a great name. Know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a 
it's a it's very much like a I don't know, like anyone who's like a fan of like superheroes or like comic books or even or even just literature, you'll notice there's a trend when it comes to names. Mm -hmm. Like authors, you'll put in uh, put in thought names, and it's never like James Gentleman. That's a good name. Like if it that's not name. if that wasn't your real name, like that would be a good name to go with, just because it's an alliteration. Although uh, today on Twitter, for the thousandth time in my life, ever since I was in about fourth grade, when uh, when Jenna Jameson, the porn star, was on some WWF like WrestleMania thing. Um, Ever, ever since then, everyone has always called me Jenna Jameson, and someone on Twitter today uh, called that out because, like, she tweeted something that went viral, or I, I don't really know. But anyway, that I, I, you know, I mean, getting compared to a porn star is fun too, I guess. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, I'm not going to drop Clint's real name, uh, although anyone who paid attention to his doxing a while back would would, would know it. Uh, but I mean, I, my point of this game is I know most of the people's, but I forget them because I like whatever. I don't care. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking, speaking of Clint's doxing, I mean, Pete has had like 50 pseudonyms i think at, at this yes. point <laughs> yeah which uh you know although he does have a, like his real name peter quinones it's a good name yeah so. it is it's a great but, name yeah yeah so i forget what was he mance raider he was, so he he started out yeah. as mance raider that's where free man beyond the wall comes from and then he was pete raymond which is yeah. his first and middle name just like i guess what clint does yeah uh, and then he did Pete Quinones when he like went professional and started working for the Libertarian Institute and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, whatever. There, there's definitely something to pick in a name. Uh, it doesn't need to be good. Um, but yeah, uh, what was I gonna? I had a thought and I forgot it. Uh, but anyways, let's. Uh, oh, let, you know what? You want to talk about pop country for some weird ass reason? Uh, oh actually, yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't, I don't want to talk about pop country. I, um. A couple of weeks ago, Mark Claire, this this would have been funny. This would have been funny if we had like stuck to our schedule, but we I think we've rescheduled at least twice now. Um, so Mark Claire like got in trouble with the Mises Caucus because he and and you know, I mean, rightly or wrongly, whatever, he um was yeah, we'll get into that. <laughs> he you know, he came out against the LP, he came out against politics in general, kind of he's more on kind of like the Jason Stapleton route, which is yeah. fine. Everybody's gotta do their own thing. Um, but he talked a lot of shit and uh the mises caucus people kind of took exception to that because he didn't he didn't like go to them privately um and you know i've cr i've uh cr criticized people for that in my in my day so you know whatever um i thought what he said was fairly benign but that's also because i'm kind of yeah. sympathetic to that i mean you know you know my you know my journey i was an agorist yeah. a year and a half ago so like <laughs> well, the weird you know. thing is i don't want to jump topics but it, he literally basically has and I'm not saying this in like to be uh, mean to Mark. Uh, I guess a less thought out, maybe not maybe the right word, maybe not not as resolute of a position. He basically is the same position as me, but not as entrenched as I have it. And it's yeah. kind of like, uh, I, and I've been having this position for a while, and I'm friends with all the people in these circles. And it's like, uh, and it's also is not at all a surprise. Like this has been very obvious. Mark's had these opinions for a while. He just hasn't been super duper vocal about him so it's like uh okay like i don't get what the uh, the hullabaloo is all about but go on so so in the like internal mises caucus chat group like just a group chat thing uh i said is there anything i shouldn't i'm going on an agorist podcast tonight is there anything i'm not allowed to talk about um and matt lucas this dude from west virginia who's real into country music and i like country music too like we've talked about our music tastes uh he said that i'm not allowed to talk about pop country so i told him just for that i'm going to talk about the luke bryan concert i went to in 2012 um which i think was probably the last country concert i went to so anyway let me drop the luke bryan name for matt and shout out matt as well well you know what i gotta say <sighs> right that was pop a... country is an abomination it's awful <laughs> It's true. Although there are some, I can't think about time ahead, but there are definitely a few that are like uh, guilty pleasures type thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So, but I can't think of any at the top of my head. But uh, for Me the either. most part, that's pretty awful. Uh, I guess you know. I I'm probably not uh like well versed enough in the country music milieu to know what it can what is considered pop country and what's yeah. like outlaw country or w whatever the renegade country. Like, there's all these different types of country music, and I know like I like what I like. That's pretty much it. For me, pretty much a uh, rule of thumb. If it's after 2000, if it's like after the 90s, it's probably, I would consider it pop country and trash. Right. See, so that's, that's just that's, me. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people hold that, that view. I don't like older, I don't like older country oh, music. I love older like. country music. Like uh, I grew up, uh, I mean, I, I, I was born in Maine. I lived in Maine really? up until, yeah, I was born in Maine. I lived in Maine until I was like 15 and I moved to Tennessee and then uh, I was there until I was 19 and then, then I moved to Florida. So uh, in Maine, and like a lot of people think like Yankees and make fun. I tease Yankees all the time too. 
Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, like I was technically a Yankee, but Maine is like a different thing. Like it's a fucking wilderness. Like Maine yeah. is like one of the number one. It might even be the number one exporter of lumber. Like it's just woods and woods and woods and woods. Like so well, it's country as fuck. But go on. You know, Brian McClanahan, the historian. Are you Maine familiar with him? Well. Yeah. yeah. So he's kind of he's he's been talking a lot about Yankees and sort of what makes a Yankee a Yankee. It's not just geographic. It's actually a whole thing. Um, it stems from Puritanism. Uh, the reason that they're called Yankees is because, uh, so I guess in German or something like that, the word for English starts with like the A N K sound, like an ank sound, uh, like English or something like that, probably. Um, mm-hmm. And so Yankee comes from that word for English. It was the English speaking people in the in the original colonies. Uh, who were the Yankees. And these were the Puritans, the ones who were constantly up in people's business. So Yankeeism is really uh, like, like that just sort of busybody mentality that is, I mean, it's, it's basically progressivism in the 16th century. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like and, to tease the, the, the like I, I kind of in my heart am uh, after, you know, being in Florida and being in Tennessee, I mean, I was only in Tennessee for like most of high school and, you know, a little bit after, but uh, those were kind of formative and it really gave me a new view of the world in so far as North and South. Cause like it was for me being in Maine, it was weird how people were like all up about like Confederate flags and stuff. But when you live in the South for a while, you're like, Oh, well this isn't really yeah. this like ominous thing. People say it is like, I would have black friends who would have it. It's not a racist thing unless you make it a racist thing. And like, yeah, I don't know. So, but for me, it's more really about rural versus uh, uh, urban is what it comes down to in the end. Uh, Cause I mean, there are definitely, like I said, being in Maine, like, the the way I grew up in Maine very much resonated with how the uh, lifestyle was when I was in Tennessee as well. It was very similar. I don't want to bring up Ben. Uh, he gave me money, so it's only fair. Little Big Town goes hard. I, I will give you some. I don't remember any of the songs. Uh, the, that na- the name of that band rings a bell. I feel like they may fall under some of the guilty pleasure, but uh, for the most part, they're kind of fucking trash. Uh, but yes, uh, pop country is a fucking abomination. But my point being is I grew up on country and uh, but then it just went to shit. And uh, I don't know, like I grew up, you know, fucking being like eight years old with my fucking family getting red net drunk. Listen to fucking like uh, Earl, like fucking like uh, Hank Williams Jr. and shit like that. So, yeah, yeah. It's, I, it, grew it, on, it I grew up on I grew up on 80s, like sort of stereotypical 80s music. Like, uh, yeah. I don't know. Tears for Fears was like the sort of quintessential 80s music that I that I listened that my parents listened to when I was little. Um and then like when I when I became a teenager and was sort of you know forming my own musical tastes, there was a little bit of Garth Brooks type country music oh, in yeah, there. Garth Brooks is good, yeah. Um, but mainly it was like Dave Matthews, which I mean when you listen to Dave, I mean he's he's Appalachian and also right. South African. <laughs> yeah, I know. See, that's it. He's all right. It's true. It really is, it really is true. But I was obsessed when I was in high yeah. school. So like that's where my musical taste just sort of like that's been my that singer songwriter kind of Dave dude, Matthews is a centrism of music. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. Don't make fun of me. I mean, but it's like that's why I'm like he's all right. It's kind of like if I had a yeah. friend who's a centrist, like if, if like like Tim Pool, like yeah, he's okay. <laughs> like Rubin. he's not the worst, but My- like I don't know. Sometimes you're like, dude, what the fuck? And then sometimes you're like, all right, okay. <laughs> My yeah. favorite, my favorite uh, YouTuber, Dave Dave Rubin. Yeah, who, uh... <laughs> yeah. The, uh, if I ever get him, I'll title it Jose and the Gay. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get Brad Palumbo. He went on Josh's show, dude. I could, I don't. Know, I know it's bad. Like, I know a lot of people shit on like echo chambers and stuff, but I, I genuinely don't want to have people on that I don't want to have conversations with. Yeah, and maybe th- maybe that makes me like an echo chamber or like. I don't think it, a lot of people are like, oh, you're scared of other ideas. I'm not scared of Brad Palumbo. I'm just not at all interested in him whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's nothing I get about a lot it that interests me. I get a lot of people think, like, asking me to have, like, candidates for office and, like, you know, well known libertarian party people who don't really have anything else that they're known for other than being liber- Like, Michael Heiss. I could probably ask Michael Heiss from the Mises Caucus to be on my show and he'd probably do it. But, like, yeah. what are we going to talk about that's relevant to, like, my podcast's format? It's, you got to like thread that needle. I'm really good friends with like the Libertarian Party's uh, gubernatorial candidate in Minnesota. And like, you know, I'm sure it would help his campaign a little bit if I had him on. It wouldn't it wouldn't help it much. It's not like my audience is Minnesotan specifically. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I just 
that's not really my that's not really my niche. I would never have Brad Palumbo on because it's not I, like I have people who I have you like to have people on who either have something interesting to say or like you who like I'm friends with who uh, not that you don't have anything interesting to say, but like you're not you're not like known as a as a thinker or an author or you know whatever. <laughs> I like you're to just think a, you're I, just, I, I, I'm an okay thinker sometimes. <laughs> you're the you're the you're the big brain on the on the on the tower gang. We all know uh, that. But. Yeah, I mean, um, I I guess I mean I feel like uh, I think I won that. Uh, they did like a forever ago a poll on that. And I think I somehow. Did magically they? won but i feel like i've gone more pee pee poo poo over time so i don't know <laughs> uh, i don't know i go back and forth it depends um shit all right well let's uh get into the fun stuff uh first off daniel he is a fucking uh he is one of my um he's one of my five dollar patreon levels so he is entitled he's supposed to leave a code because the way it works my five dollar level there's a the code i give you guys but just because i know he's one of mine i'll, I'll go ahead. he says he wants to know how you're gay <laughs> i'm just kidding you don't have to answer <laughs> that's, uh... it's like uh you see that gif that's like that like african was like why are you gay <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know uh but all right anyway so, yeah. Oh, yeah sorry that was, a, that, was, that was a deep cut uh, <laughs> let's get into all right the one i want to touch on first is i just did a whole abortion episode with uh carrie baldwin which is really great and i, I found yeah. that interesting because um you know me and her both i'm i would consider myself pro-life now when it comes to the legal side of things like because that is weird like do i advocate for further abortion laws i don't advocate for them but i don't advocate against them either that's kind of ways i i see abortion as murder and so and we can go into that but i uh so but legally speaking like uh, i guess i kind of see the same way i see murder laws like i i, I personally necessarily wouldn't as an anarchist i don't know uh, i something I have to think about more I don't know if I'd necessarily uh, endorse those laws, but I'm not against it. If someone came out with like mm -hmm. an, a murder law for, I mean, I guess it would obviously depend. But say we didn't have murder laws in the book, and tomorrow they made murder laws. I'd be like, well, I mean, if you're going to have a government, it's pretty fair. Yeah, <laughs> like, That's so, yeah. yeah like I, I get it. Like <laughs> if we're, if we're playing by this logic. So I'm not like upset about it. You won't, you won't hear me like railing against it. Um but, uh, you know, when it comes to, like, uh, the criminal justice system, obviously, I think the way that we deal with this shit is completely wrong. So making abortion laws that penalize, I mean, I'm sure there's probably ways you can go about it that penalize women. Uh, I don't think it, most of the time, depending on how they go about it, it's probably not going to really uh, address the situation. Uh, like, I know in the Anarchist Handbook, uh, the Berkman chapter, he goes into how uh, most of our criminal justice system is just punitive and it doesn't actually solve anything. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, that's why most of our uh, thinkers endorse, like, a, a restitution type model because it's like you know what the fuck are you gonna what do you get out of punishing someone like say a woman aborts a child uh what do you get out of just throwing her in jail not you don't get anything out of that you just you get i don't know you get some sort of sati satiation because you got blood out of it or something i, I know it's just silly but um anyways back to her uh i just find it funny that i'm like an atheist She's coming from a religious perspective. We're both able to reach the same perspective. I want to hear what your perspective on abortion, because I don't know if I've ever heard you talk on it. But, it, I mean, obviously, like, you know, you di are someone who came from the left. Uh, you know, like, you're – and, I mean, obviously, the, there's, like, the, the gay thing. You're, like, kind of Catholic. Like, so it's kind of, I'm kind of curious where you're coming from, what your thoughts are on the matter, uh, and if you're cool with killing babies or not. So – yeah, so I, I am cool with killing babies, but I'm not cool with killing babies if you're taking them out of the womb. There's, there's a big difference there. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I would call myself pro-life. I so I'm I'm Catholic. I'm I don't practice Catholicism, but like I would always consider myself Catholic at heart. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so you're Catholic in the same way that like Dave Smith is Jew, kind of deal. Kinda, yeah. yeah. Um, except like, I well, I don't know. I mean. No, I, I don't think so. Like I'm, I, I definitely believe in the like Catholic doctrines. Most of them, uh, clearly, there's one sticking point at least. But uh, when it <laughs> when it comes to um, yeah, when it comes to the value of human life, I think that I do kind of hold to that. And so, um, if life begins at conception, and it it kind of obviously does. Uh, then it's not just to end that life um, intentionally. Yeah. Uh, I and you know that and, and I think a lot of pro-choice activists will criticize pro-lifers and rightly so for their sort of stance on you know the, oh yeah we're pro-life until they until they pop out of the pussy but like you know after that all, all bets are off and especially you know 
um, it tends to be that conservatives are pro-life on abortion, um, but also like vehemently support things like war and capital punishment and things like that. I'm pretty consistent on those. So um, what you said about the, the criminal justice system a minute ago, uh, I identify with. I, I don't believe in punishment. I think that punishment is um, tantamount to scapegoating, mm -hmm. um, especially at the societal level. And as someone who, you know, does hold to those Catholic um, values, uh, I think that scapegoating is sort of a denial of the crucifixion. And because if Jesus was a sufficient sacrifice, then there's no, there's no need to have scapegoats um, in a society. Uh, I, I, and, you know, obviously the Catholic church has two centuries worth of, um, uh, of history uh, of scapegoating. Um, you know, we, we did the, we did the, uh, God, what are they called? The Inquisitions and all that stuff. Um, not so much the, not so much the rich, rich, witch trials, the Protestants kind of had us on that, but you know, there's, there's always, there's always scapegoats in society. And I don't like that. Um, I think that there's a big difference between punishing someone, um, and like, just protecting society. So like, I don't know that a woman needs to be locked up for having an abortion because, well, I mean, who are you protecting there? It's not like she's a habitual murderer. It's not like she's going to go aborting everyone else's babies. Um, but on the other hand, how do you deter it? I think that it takes a cultural change. I don't think that there's a mm -hmm. solution to that. Um, yeah. Which is a incentivize abortion. If you want abortion yeah. to stop, which is a big part of uh, a lot of our, you know, you know, our theory when it comes to like, you know, anarchist, libertarian, whatever. I do think I'm very much of the opinion that in a true free society, it would be extremely, I guess, socially conservative, if you will. Uh, so, like, I think that that would kind of root out that problem. I think more or less it would be a social pariah to to kill your child. And and even then, if we want to get really deep, uh, you could say that, like, you know, in a uh, hoppy in a uh, covenant community type society you could legit just be like hey you're fucking if you're aborting children you can get the fuck out like yeah uh you know like yeah we aren't gonna like punish you but i mean i guess you can consider that a punishment but hey you signed the dotted line when you came into this community and that was a you know term of the term of it and uh you can get fucked like get out of here like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. like, i mean it, yeah i i'm a very much the same opinion i mean don't get me wrong there's definitely a part of and I think this is actually like a fighting human, uh, human, uh, human nature to some extent, and, and not necessarily in a bad way. I think it's probably one of the negative things of human nature to where we do desire scapegoats or blood or what, whatever, what have you. Um, and I do think there is something to where that's that's kind of a bad thing. Like we need to be to some extent rational and realize that, like, yeah. hey, if the only thing uh, you're doing is fucking just punishing someone, um, you know. Do you? Sorry, I was reading Daniel's. Uh, yeah. thing. Oh, is that the but, is that the code? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did do the code. Uh, but nice. yeah, um, God, I fucking God, you threw my you threw off my fucking train of thought, Daniel or Jacob, where the fuck your name is? Uh, if that is your real name. Yeah. yeah but uh, God, what did I, what was I even just saying? I just got completely I sidetracked. I, saw, I, 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 I had a good paying flow. attention to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shit, damn it! I had a good point. You threw me. God damn it, Jacob. All right, fuck it. We'll bring up his shit in the meantime. Uh. Do you, oh, I know what it's talking about. It's talking about how, you know, being like punitive, like just do just do things to hurt people. Like it doesn't help anything. Like uh, now, like say for example, in our abortion example, like yes, okay, if you had a woman who's like aborted like five fucking kids, okay, maybe there's a case to be made. Locking her up ha has some fucking uh, has some sort of um, you know benefit or whatever. Um, but um, you know, like that would be the case that like she's continually doing it. But if it's just like a one time thing. It doesn't make much sense, but um, yeah, I, I definitely think the whole punitive side of things, you know, a good example would be the pedophiles. That's where always people go to. Like if there's a pedophile and you kill a pedophile because they're doing pedophile shit, like sure. You could say maybe that was punitive, but there's also a case to be made that like, uh, I mean, that was to also a little bit preventative, <laughs> like, um, you know, depending on the situation. I'm yeah, not one I... who gets all cut up on the wood chipper shit. Cause I think that gets kind of, cringy and gay and, and not in the not in the good way yeah like it, so and that stuff kind of irritates me but you know somewhat it's funny here and there but uh yeah i think i'm know. with you on that it, it's just um i don't like i don't i don't know if i don't know if killing people for any reason is necessary really um and it, i mean i don't know i i'm sure i could come up with 
if I really gave it some thought a scenario when I was, so I went to a, I went to a Catholic high school um, to answer David's question. It was a Jesuit high school. Uh, and my junior year, um, the, the name of like the theology class was faith, morality, and justice. And uh, so for the like justice section, um, and this was like pre-social justice warrior, thank God, I have no idea what's going on in that school now. But uh, for the justice system, we had to pick like a controversial issue and do a big project on it. You know, it could be like a diorama or write a long paper or whatever, uh, but it was a group project. And uh, my best friend was like a film buff. He was just constantly making movies and, um, you know, going to every movie that came out and stuff like that. Uh, and so we decided to film a documentary on capital punishment and being in Texas. I mean, that's, you know, it's just kind of part of it. Um, so his mom took me and our other, our other partner in our little, our little group project. And we toured the prison, um, including the death chamber, where they actually put people to death and we were in the warden's office while he was on the phone with governor george w bush's office and putting someone to death uh and the, it was just the most surreal surreal experience of my life um this guard was running back and forth between the warden's office and the death chamber confirming like okay the first injection's gone in so the warden tells the governor's office, okay, the first injection's gone in. And then that guard runs away back to the death chamber and, you know, waits for the next thing to happen. And the between times, the governor's office and the warden are just sitting there joking like nothing's happening. And it's at this... It, so that was kind of what solidified my opinion, I guess, on capital punishment. Um, mm -hmm. To know that to know that there was someone dying who had repented for, for all I knew he had repented of his, of his crime. Um, and it was just a very, it was a very hard thing to sit through as a 17 year old kid. Um, fast forward, I'm in my twenties. I'm kind of active in the, in sort of evangelical circles. Like I was still Catholic, but, um, I was sort of in like various church groups and stuff like that. I was just, you know, trying to be super Christian. And, um, there was this biker church, uh, out in West Texas. And I saw one of the, one of the people, like they had these big, like leather jacket, leather vests, um, you know, like what bikers wear and they all had patches and they were like cr Christian patches. They had crosses and stuff like that. And one of them, one of their patches said, uh, William Joseph kitchens, like RIP or whatever. And I was like, William Joseph kitchens. Holy shit. I was there when he died. I went up to this person. Like, how do you know William Joseph kitchens? And she, she said, Oh, I I'm, I'm in a prison ministry and we ministered to him. Uh, we were the only ones who were allowed to, to meet with him other than the prison chaplain. And sorry. And she was talking about how he had become so at peace with his fate and his like eternal fate that he just, he gave up all of his appeals. He, it was, it was so weird. Like we didn't understand why he didn't continue appealing his sentence that was part of our documentary and the paper that we had to write. And we didn't get like why this person just decided that he was going to go ahead and die, even though that he, even though he considered himself innocent um, to the day he died, he didn't, he, he never, he never admitted to having done what he was convicted of doing. Um, and the idea that this person who was quite possibly wrongfully accused most definitely um, at peace with his own, with his own spiritual walk. And for all anyone outside of his own heart could tell had become, if he wasn't already a good person and a potential positive force on society, uh, that to me is like the redemptive arc. Um, I think that if uh, I think I think he went by Billy Joe because it was William Joseph. I think if Billy Joe Kitchens had been allowed to go and live a life outside of prison rather than getting put to death by the state, George W. Bush specifically, my least favorite president of my lifetime at the very least, um, you know, the world might have been a better place. And I hate that. Yeah. So 
that's that's sort of the backstory of my position on capital punishment. Thanks for bringing that out. I don't think I've ever told that story to anybody, really. <laughs> You're good. Um, yeah. Go on. Yeah. So that's so that. Yeah, that's it, really. Yeah. Um, no, I, I definitely uh, even though I did say that, uh, you know, maybe there are cases to be made. I would never, ever, ever trust the government, the state with a fucking uh, with a uh, with the power to decide who lives and dies. Uh, that's just my personal. I I'm not someone who has any necessarily any qualms with a vigilante thing. I know there was that thing a while ago <laughs> with uh, um, Kane Velasquez, I think Kane Velasquez who shot. Or okay, I it gets a little murky because I guess he ended up accidentally shooting the dude who was just like uh, you know, I think it was like the stepfather or dad of the person who supposedly molested his uh his child but now had that been a straight up situation where it was the child molester and he fucking hunted him down and shot him i personally would have no like yeah. i wouldn't call for any legal action whatsoever against him but now the state doing it fuck off but now now in the situation where i mean i don't know all the details i didn't follow the case that much but let's say uh you know you know it's just straight up he shot the wrong guy let's say Let's say we change the scenario and the guy, he, the, you know, the person who was you know, the stepdad or father of the child molester, he shot and killed. Now, I actually think Kane should face some charges, face some issues with that, you know, some sort of whether it be restitution, whatever. Uh, but, you know, if it was someone who did wrong you in some sort of degree like that, I mean, I'm, I'm you know, not necessarily against vigilante justice. Uh, so I'm technically not against the death penalty, but, but not against it for the I'm against it for the state. And now if yeah. a if a community ever, you know, decided to uh, on an individual or semi group level voluntarily deal with, I guess, deal with a, you know, essentially what is a wolf in their fucking uh, in their in their fucking community. And that's what they do and come to find out everything was correct. And this person was doing heinous shit. I mean, OK, maybe it's not yeah. ideal. Maybe we never qualms, but I'm not going to call for them to have any legal action against them. But now the state never, never, ever, ever. I don't trust them with it, like at all. So, because you gave a perfect example of it, because this person probably was a different person by the end, and mm -hmm. it doesn't, it doesn't make sense at all with the death penalty. Like, even some of the worst cases, these guys, uh, it'd be one thing if they did it like expeditiously and they did it like immediately and fucking boom, you're dead, you did your thing. I mean, I'd still probably wouldn't agree with it, but it's it's a, a whole other abhorrent thing. Well, these guys sit in death row for decades. Yeah, and it's like you've created and you've like allowed this person to become an entirely different person that even by a putative standard, it's like, you're not even punishing the same person. Literally every single cell in that person's body is entirely different by that point in time. Mm -hmm. They're not even biologically. They, they basically aren't the same person aside from maybe their genetic code, which even then you could say probably has changed enough to be technically a distinct person. So like, I, I don't know. It's just ridiculous. It makes no fucking sense. The way we go about our death penalty system at all. And yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I still wouldn't be for them doing an expeditious manner. That's a whole other host of problems. But it's <laughs> it, it's also definitely distinctly worse. Well, not even worse, but di bad in a different way when they sit there for forever. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm a I'm a fan. I don't know. I like the idea of exile, I guess. But then that's also mm -hmm. that that presents another whole host of problems where you know, oh well, you can't live in our community, but here you go go be a predator in that community over there. Like that's that's also not a great option. Um, Bob Murphy's chaos theory, where he talks about sort of like the, the voluntary prisons um, and yeah. sort of like the, the gradations of, of imprisonment where, you know, they're gradually re reacclimated into society, you know, as they, as they gain more and more trust and privilege um, within the system. Uh, you know, obviously I think that, I think that chaos theory is one of the most ingenious pieces of libertarian literature, like ever written. I I'm just a huge fan of it. Um, but, uh, I, I do like that idea as far as, um, separation of, of dangerous people from society, uh, with the possibility of re reintegrating them with society. Um, yeah. I think it's cool. I don't know how realistic it is. Um, but you know, yeah, I, I, yeah chaos theory is probably one of the next ones I want to do a live read. Once I'm done with all of Konkin's main yeah. works, uh, I'll probably, I want to, I think I might want to do chaos oh, theory. I love that booklet whatever yeah. whatever you'd call it yeah yeah uh all right uh 
does he drop the code? Do you guys agree or disagree with Bob Murphy on free markets tending towards pacifism and non-forceful enforcement? Uh, I guess no. so. Yeah, sure. I, mean, I don't. Mean? I, no. Okay. No, I don't. I, I it depends I, what you mean by that specifically. But go on. I think that humans are by nature. Uh, can you put the can you put the question back up on the screen? Oh, okay. To, yeah. I need to reread it. So. Do you agree or disagree with Bob Murphy on free markets tending towards pacifism and non-forceful enforcement? Okay. I think that free markets obviously tend towards voluntary interaction. Yes. Um, I think there will always be red markets. I think that criminals are going to criminal. There will mm -hmm. always be something that someone else will be jealous of and use force to, to get it. Um, now that's not the, that's not the same. That's not the same as, Okay, maybe yeah, maybe maybe they do tend towards it. Yeah, I think that's probably. I think yeah, I guess yeah. I do agree with that. Um, yeah, I don't think that I don't think that yeah. free markets are a are a utopia. Yeah, I get I what you're getting at. You're because you, yeah. it, it kind of. Uh, I feel like this question kind of uh, cooks the books in its favor because it starts with free markets. So it's like in this magical. It's kind of like I, I read like half of Man Economy and State, and I for, I forget. Like he would, uh, like economic. He would speak in economics terms, and he would be like, "Hey, in this perfect free world society," and he had a term for it, like this model of the perfect free society, and he would compare it to like today's. Um, like this is operating off of this perfect one. Yeah, sure. In this perfect free society that somehow magically exists, uh, yes, I, I do think it would tend towards passive, passive, pacifism and non-forceful. <laughs> Uh, enforcement. Uh, yeah, I think if you yeah. do allow things to be voluntary, it tends to that way. But it's kind yeah, of like... I, I mean, it's, it's like the... Kind of, it's, it's, sorry. It's kind of, it's, sorry, I'm just saying, like, free markets, it's kind of almost like you're being redundant here. Like, if we're in a free market situation, do you think there'd be more free market situations? It's like, I mean, I guess passism and non-forceful enforcement are kind of a little bit different, but they're kind of very similar. So it's like, well, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. What's, the, what's the old, like, classical liberal saying it's like something like you know if where where goods and services cross borders armies don't or something like that i mean it's yeah. like, kind of like that just on a smaller yeah. scale yeah i yeah. think that's i think that that's trending towards towards accurate yeah uh someone said i'll spot uh, jc sell spot oh, david gets the last from the lawn and he's referring to a previous one i saw it was a fake super chat fake super chat yeah, yeah i guess fair enough i guess this works we'll not make it a habit of this thing because it's annoying that i go hunt down the Luckily, I know. So, do you think Reed is right when he warns about a hard swing rightward? Am I crazy to see almost right wing reactionary stuff out of the post libertarians? I think so. I was thinking about today, and I think the best hey, wait, move right now. Wait, for Jose, the, I don't, uh, I don't listen but, to Reed. Can you, can you summarize what, what, what he's asking about? I mean, basically, he's just been, he's been talking a lot about uh how he thinks there's gonna be a hard swing back to the right, and I actually think he's kind of right. Yeah, of uh, course. You know, like uh, I think, and a lot of people are excited about Trump and what it could be. I actually think if I was the one. If I was the, the, the fucking Illuminati or the elites or the, whoever's pulling the strings, I would actually want a right winger, be it Trump, DeSantis, whatever, to get in office uh, right now. That Because that, that's the way they're able to. So I know especially like we talk a lot about our states' rights stuff, you know, DeSantis and stuff like that. Like, oh, look, well, look how things have changed. But now what happens when we get a right winger in office? And especially now they're going to be they're also going to inherit all this horse shit that we're about to fuck like we're already feeling right now and it's probably only gonna get worse so i mean that's the move you put a right wing on there and that kind of quells the system whereas i honestly kind of want a i would like to see like a kamala fucking presidency next that'd be fucking great they can completely lay us all the feet of the progressives that'd be fucking amazing like it's gonna happen what no matter who's in office so who do i want to accept the blame and who would i want to be the face for it and it's also like a lot of the stuff that's been good that's coming out of the right i i want to see continue but I think if we see a uh, Republican in, in the presidency, I think we may uh, mm -hmm. that may flip a little bit, you know. But go on, yeah, get your your point, your perspective. Yeah. No. Uh, well. So if Reed is worried about a rightward shift, um, then I don't know if I necessarily share that worry. Uh, like the pendulum is just going to have to swing back. I mean, that's just kind of how it works. Um, mm -hmm. everything is kind of cyclical and oscillating and it's kind of always doing that. Um, legal man. Are, are you familiar with legal man? Yeah. Okay. So he, he's very critical of this sort of cyclical view of history where like, like the fourth turning type stuff. Um, he says, look, we're, we're out of time. Like there, that cycle is not going to repeat itself. It can't repeat itself. Like we're, we're in for like the big one coming up. Um, I'm more worried about that than a, than a rightward shift. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I'd like to at least 
own a house and and like have somewhere to call home before I before the before the entire system comes crashing down. Um, <clears throat> so I think if there's if there's a rightward shift between now and then, um, that'll prolong the amount of time that I've got between now and then. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's <laughs> basically. <see> you... <laughs> Uh, hey, what's up, uh, John? Uh, I haven't seen you here in a while. What's up, dude? Uh, John Hartman, definitely. Uh, I don't know if he's even still doing Oh, my God, stuff. John. Yeah, I love John. He's love great. Uh, I don't know if he's uh, still doing content, but definitely if – I'm sure it's still up. Check out his content. If he's not still doing it, he should. He has great content. Yeah, follow uh, his Instagram. He's got great artwork yeah. too. Yeah, good uh, stuff. John, put it in the chat. Do you do you sell your artwork? If you do, we'd love to promote it because – you're like one of one of my favorite people anyway. So I'm going to yeah. hijack Jose's show and give him another sponsor. No, you're good. Uh, I, I'm all for it. Um, go ahead. Uh, let's go into – I kind of want to touch on the libertarian infighting shit a little bit just for funsies. And it'll probably be we, – we, we, we dragged surprisingly this one one thing on for a while. So yeah. uh, this will probably be our last one, and maybe I'll good to have you come on again, and we'll touch on some more stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, I want to get your thoughts on a lot of the libertarian infighting, especially the post-libertarian stuff and maybe how that yeah, relates sure. to – to mark uh and it's funny because i do want to preface this where i mean everyone knows i'm the agorist guy but i'm like super friendly with the post libertarians mm -hmm. uh although it's like i guess for me and i've said this before like uh i i, I put out a while back like the only two uh paths that i see having any merit right now are hoppa and konkin uh, and obviously you can conflate those with other people as well. Conkin, you could say it's like kind of like Stapleton or I don't right. know, whatever, et cetera. So, but people get what I'm getting at. And fucking <clears throat> uh, that's kind of how I see it. Like I, I definitely, obviously I clearly have, you know, as my, per my stance and you being an aggress, I definitely prefer that one. But the, you know, when it comes to like the Hoppa, you know, the, which is roughly kind of generally speaking what the post libertarians kind of generally sort of are pushing, uh, I do. Th I find far more merit in that, and then the libertarian, the big L libertarian push, personally. Um, so I have a harder time critiquing that move than I do the libertarian one. Um, so I, I guess I kind of want to, you know, start with that and kind of get your thoughts on, you know, mm -hmm. the post libertarian move and stuff because you are kind of still involved with the party and stuff. So, but yet you're still very friendly with the post. Yeah. Whereas I have noticed, especially the closer it gets to Reno the more peeved it seems the LPMC guys are at the post people. And it's like, I'm sorry. There are people giving decent critiques of your positions. I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So, I mean, so as someone who's very close with LB and um, has been close with, with Pete, I haven't talked to Pete in a while, uh, but you know, and I admire, I admire Pete. I admire Mark. Um, it, and you know Andrew has a lot to a lot of good things to say. Matt Erickson is one of my favorite people in the world. Matt Matt Erickson is the is the person I would turn to for advice, which you know I, that's that's kind of saying a lot. I don't ask people for advice very often. Um, so uh, I'm sympathetic towards the post libertarian guys. I think the most important thing to realize about post libertarian ism is is that it's not an ism. I guess mm -hmm. like. Uh, yeah, there's there's some of those guys who are thinking, you know, oh, we need to we need to make the GOP libertarian. And there's some who are like, no, we need to get the hell out of politics and, and find Jesus. And some of them are saying, no, we need to get the hell out of politics and find money. And some people are saying, let's get the hell. out." I mean, I would consider probably this modern agorist movement that I was part of for a while, um, something of a, a part of that post libertarian mo moment, as LB calls it. Yeah. Um, and. You know, I, I mean, I, I, it makes a whole lot of sense. I, I, I think that Andrew and Tho, uh, they, they have a, they have a tough road to hoe. It's not, it's not going to be easy to turn the GOP libertarian any more than it's going to be easy to turn the Libertarian Party into a political force to be reckoned with. You know, I, I mean, Michael Heiss and Tho Bishop both have their work cut out for them. Um, the main reason that I'm kind of sticking with the Mises crowd is because that's where my friends are. Like if I had been friends with Tho Bishop in his circle, then I probably would have uh, fallen in with that. Um, <clears throat> that said, uh, you know, after Reno, my, my whole focus is going to be shifting to myself. Like I, I'm, I'm working closely with Jason Stapleton, um, going to be working with Tom Woods uh, and, you know, a, a few other sort of libertarian or libertarian ish, entrepreneurs to build a business that is serving our community um because i i don't want to i don't want to be stuck with my dick in my hand when the when the 
when the economy crashes. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll have my dick in my hand anyway, but like, I don't want that to be the only thing I have in my hand. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, I, 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 I've thrown in a lot of hours, a lot of work, a lot of money, um, into LP stuff because I love those guys. And, um, now it's kind of time for me to focus on me. Uh, I'm not going to like go off on the LP. I think I've, I think I've said, I think that I made a mistake in calling myself an agorist and then starting a fucking agorist podcast, uh, prematurely. Like I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not cut out for like gray market activity. I'm just not, it's just not in my yeah. personality, which is fine. You know, like that's, that's yeah. perfectly okay. Well, um, yeah. That's definitely one thing I've stressed enough. You don't have to be, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, you, I know you beat yourself up for that a little bit. I, I don't, I don't think you, I mean, obviously once you got involved in politics, it was fair. Uh, and I'm not yeah. saying that to like slight you, but like, say you never did. I, I still don't like, even if you're only, you know, in the, the lightest of gray, you know, you yeah. only push it a little bit. I'd still be like, Hey, you're an agorist, whatever you're just, yeah. you know, everyone has their subjective, uh, you know, value of, of how much risk they're willing to take on. And, you know, everyone's a little bit different and, uh, you know, with high risk comes high reward. I mean, you sometimes you fuck up because uh, a lot of people bring up Ross Ulbricht as a uh, as a critique against agorism. Like, yeah, OK, that's kind of like pointing out one really bad investment as a fucking yeah. uh, slight against investing in general. And it's like, OK, well, yeah, I mean, when you risk it big, uh, you may very well uh, fuck up. So that's a I mean, is that really a knock against investing? I mean, sure, sort of, I guess, kind of. Like, <laughs> like, uh, but OK, you, you, you played a little wrong. Uh I mean, to be fair, I'm not trying to shit on Ross. Uh, there was definitely a lot of uh, other factors that went in there, and I don't think anyone expected him to get fucked to that degree. But, right. You know, like, uh, uh, but yeah. Hopefully Dave going... Smith wins the presidency and pardons him or something. Yeah, right. I'm <laughs> mostly kidding. Um, yeah, absolutely kidding. Some president can can pardon him, I, and I hope that that happens one of these yes, days. If, if Dave uh, Smith got elected, he'd probably – he would – Okay, I, I I only semi lie joke, but uh, I mean, he, he, I don't I don't know if he'd necessarily go on a convertible ride in fucking uh, Dallas, but uh, <laughs> yeah, he, I know he, he they would they would find one way or another to deal with him, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whether whether it's to make him absolutely useless in the sense of how they did with with Trump, with Trump which, yeah, or or they do just go the crude route and just deal with it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, so um, or or you start getting weird shit in the mail, like here's pictures of your kids and uh, you know, just wink wink, like I shit like that, which yeah, I mean. I, I don't mean, see why Fed wouldn't do that, but yeah, of course they would. I mean, if, yeah. yeah, obviously. Um, and Dave is not Donald Trump either. Like, yeah. I feel like he would probably he would probably be more apt to bend over for for them under pressure than Trump was because Trump is an egomaniac narcissist and Dave's a nice guy. So yes. Uh, but anyway, Dave's not going to be the president, so who cares? Um, what was I talking about? So yeah, the 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 L So I'm not. I'm not like severing ties with the Mises caucus. Uh, I'm not going full like anti-politics or anything like that. Um, but I am going to have to focus on, on sort of my own projects because, uh, and this is, this is, this is Jason Stapleton's big thing. I, I guess if I'm, if I'm most sympathetic to any of the post-libertarian for want of a better term guys, it's, it's going to be Jason Stapleton. Um, his, his program like is caricatured as like, Oh yeah, just snap your fingers and stop being poor or whatever. Uh, but it's much more, it's much more realistic than that. It's look, you cannot have political power if you don't have power over your own life. That's just not yeah. a thing. And if I want, and I don't want to have political power, I have no interest in that. Um, but I would like for my, you know, the people who I support politically to have political power, but I'm not going to be able to do that if I'm not, if I'm not in a place where I'm determining my own, my own path, my own results, et cetera. Um, so if I take a step back from politics for a couple of years, I mean, maybe that, maybe that will give me the freedom to get back into it kind of whole hog in 2024. I don't know, uh, if I'm even still interested in it. Um, if, you know, ask anybody who knows me, uh, they'll tell you my interests tend to shift. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm i uh, I'm definitely very sympathetic to Stapleton's uh, thing. I've, I've said many times that I just feel it's basically just agorism rebranded. In a yeah, certain it really state. is. Yeah. And I'm, I'm fine with it. I, I like it. It's, and I like how it's a different way of looking at it. Uh, it's a different perspective. It's almost like a, I guess in a way, almost a more right wing take. It's funny. I actually got in an argument with someone about this the other day. Cause they were, I don't remember who specifically we were talking about, but they kind of, uh, 
like oh oh just get rich bro type thing and like they're kind of like making out like it's just materialism and it's just oh just get your money bro and fuck everyone else it's like okay like or, or do you think maybe you know especially being as we're you know a lot of us are austrian economic types people it's like don't you think that like wealth means more than just literal money like that can mean all sorts of things like i mean anyone who understands wealth realizes it's just a matter of what do you value and it's getting more of those things that you value uh and you know i guess maybe i guess you could say like oh i value being involved in lpmc this or doing that mm -hmm. and this but i mean if we're gonna be real it's like okay what you know do you think gen really brings value to your life and you should try to have more of that that doesn't necessarily mean money uh, like for me, I, I would consider myself, you know, being as agorist, being more of a wealth power influence guy. I'm trying to, uh, in my current situation, I'm not necessarily, I mean, obviously I'd like more money, but my, the thing I value more is more time. I, I want to have more, I want yep. to have, I mean, obviously if I could get more money, that'd be great. But the, the biggest priority is to get the same or more amount of money and having more time at home, uh, being able to be more flexible, uh, stuff like that. And to me, that's what I value. That would be more wealth to me. I could make less money. And as long as I can still pay the bills and if I'm have I'm working less hours or if I'm at home or uh, if I have more family time, et cetera, to me, that is, that is a richer existence. For example, I look at someone like Bill Gates and I don't see them as a wealthy person. I see that as a poor person. I see, feel like that is a person who is not living a life, you know, I just, I don't know. It's a shell of a human being, yeah. a borderline literal demon. <laughs> like, so uh, I don't know if you have anything to add to that, but uh, yeah. No, I think you said it well. Um, the, yeah, no, that's it. I mean, I guess the main difference between Jason Stapleton and agorism is like Konkin's, Konkin's end goal is for the state to sort of collapse under under itself and for the black and gray markets to in some sense have influenced that collapse whereas jason's jason's thing is like look if you want to be involved in politics just buy your way into it buy yourself a lobbyist or become a lobbyist or just you know all that stuff um i think there's a nuance so, the agorism thing i will say that because i I've yeah. touched on that and i've also been doing the live reading and the more i read it and more i'm like okay well it's not straight up utopian but i can see how people got this takeaway yeah um, yeah yeah, yeah. But yeah. go on <laughs> No, that's it. That's it. Uh, yeah, that 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 would be Jason's. Like, um, if you want to be in, involved in politics, go for it. Whereas Conca would probably not encourage someone to become involved in politics. Yeah, probably not. <clears throat> Although, I mean, generally speaking, de facto, even I feel like even Stapleton wouldn't. Although, like Stapleton's point is like, okay, e even like Stapleton, like from what I've seen of him, uh, if he was to encourage you to get into politics, it because you're at the point where you're so fucking wealthy, uh -huh. and and his point would be, okay, well then uh instead of, he wouldn't even probably advocate you getting involved in politics he'd probably advocate you paying off lobbyists which even then i think there's a fucking perspective to be had for agorists i know me and sal on our, one of our recent episodes we talked about that me and him both were kind of like well i guess yeah there's not really any issue with that fuck it like you're just bribing political officials at that point like that's all yeah. you're doing like i mean there's not really anything wrong with that in my per my perspective so uh, by Jose's definition of wealthy person, a homeless person is wealthy because they have all the time in the day to do nothing. Dude, that's just as retarded as a person who says, oh, oh, you're just thinking about money. Like, okay. Obviously, my only thing that I value is not time. Like, that's fucking retarded. Let's be real. I yeah. like you, and you come to these a lot, but that, that is, I mean, I don't know if you're just being intentionally stupid or intentionally strumming, but that's dumb. <laughs> like, obviously, there's a balance to be had. <laughs> like, I, that's why I said I don't want less money. I mean, I guess I'd take a little bit less money, but not a lot. <laughs> like, I, just, I still need to live. <laughs> like, and yeah, but money <sighs> does buy. Do, so there's more to it than that. But I do wish I had more time, though. Like, I mean, if I if I could if I could get a good night's sleep. I mean, look at you can tell. Like, I have not slept much this past week because my uh, my day job. I'm I work for a software company. I'm doing like enterprise um, implementations of this this software as a service and that's about as deep into it as I'd like to get. Um, uh, and we're doing these implementations. There's like, you know, four of them happening at once. They're all nearing the completion of their, of their thing. And like everyone, like I'm juggling everyone who has a legitimate claim on my time because, you know, someone above me in the ladder of control signed the contract on my behalf. And I don't, I, I mean, like I, I love the company I work for and I love my job, but like, I do not want to be someone signing contracts telling that, that, that 
um, promise my time to you know another company. And some of our clients are not the most savory of companies. I'm not naming any names, but uh, you know, I, I would like to be able to pick and choose my own clients and also um, let them know how much time I'm going to be spending on the project rather than <laughs> rather yeah. than some you know vice president or whatever. Well, all right. Well, I think we're at a good point to go ahead and kill it. I told my wife I'd do an hour. We're at exactly an hour. Oh, great. I, I, like I said, I, I don't know if we touched on this. Story. I can't I believe it's been an hour. Right? I had to reschedule. I know. It felt like it was pretty quick. I, I could totally do another hour, honestly. I, I have more topics, but uh, I told my wife I'd do it, keep it an hour. And, uh, you know, I like uh, getting laid. So I, I'll try to, you know, listen to her. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I normally don't, I normally don't schedule a podcast on nights that I'm at my wife's home because she works nights and that's kind of my podcast. And, uh, at the end of the day, like, you know, if, if what you value, one of the things I value most is pussy. So I don't ever, uh, try to, you know, interfere with that. But I, uh, this whole week basically got de decimated for podcasting because I fucking, uh, one of my kitties decided to go in labor literally the day I scheduled with you. Uh, and then I had like Excited. two days of literally sitting by a cat, hoping it would pop out the last cat because it delayed labor. Uh, so that was fun. I had a really fucked up sleep for the week. So uh, I'm glad you're able to accommodate me and get you in now. And that's why I'm doing it now. But it's a uh, we totally if this had been uh, earlier, we would totally go a lot longer. I may have to come and get you to come on again because I definitely have like another hour worth of content here. Although, yeah. But anyways, with that, if you want to go and drop your plugs. <laughs> Yeah, James LJ on Twitter, blackbirdpodcast.com. That's that's about it. Uh, I'm really getting into Discord lately, which, God, I like I need another social network. But yeah, just find me on Twitter. That's probably the yeah. best place. I feel like I've been on Discord. That's the one where you can like video chat with people and shit, right? And, like, I think so. I think you can video chat, but I've never done it. I don't know. I mean, I feel like I've dicked with it. I don't know. I, I, I'm the tech retard and like all this overwhelming, all this stuff gets to me. But with that, uh, this is No Way Jose show. You can find me on uh, YouTube, all the major audio podcatchers, uh, Odyssey as well. Follow me on Twitter at 2020 No Way Jose. Patreon.com, just No Way Jose 2020. If you want to give me money, I'm a big fan of that. Appreciate everyone who showed up. Uh, I know it was a little bit mean to you, Reardon, but I do like you always showing up here. Uh, that was just a silly a silly comment uh like share subscribe comment all that good stuff uh and that we are out thanks james it was fun i'll definitely have to have you come on again soon thank you see ya i right, see ya oh i gotta pee <laughs>